Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in her address to the 75th UN General Assembly urges world body to ensure timely and simultaneous availability of corona vaccine to all nations. Black 26th September today as the indemnity barring trial of Bongo Bundu killing passed on this day in 1975, Awamilik scrapped black law on assuming power after 21 years. Coronavirus infection declining in country as 1,106 test positive in past 24 hours. World Health Organization warns of 2 million possible deaths around the world before effective COVID-19 vaccine made available. And Manchester United beat Brighton 3-2 in English Premier League football. Assalamu alaikum viewers, I'm Tanzila Mana Sultan. I'm welcoming you all to news at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattogram Center. Those were the headlines, now moving on to the details. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has urged the United Nations to treat the COVID-19 vaccine as a global public good and ensure its timely availability to all countries at the same time. The Prime Minister made the call while virtually addressing the general debate in the 75th United Nations General Assembly at the UN headquarters in New York today. Sheikh Hasina said the pharmaceutical industry of Bangladesh has the capacity to go for vaccine production in mass scale if Bangladesh is provided with the technical know-how and patents. She termed the COVID-19 pandemic as a stark reminder, saying fates of the human being are interconnected and no one is secured until everyone is secured. It was the Prime Minister's 17th speech at the UNGA as the head of Bangladesh government, which she delivered in Bangla like previous years, following the footprints of the father of the nation, Bangabuntu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. COVID-19 vaccine. A vaccine is a vaccine. A vaccine is a vaccine. A vaccine is a vaccine. এবং একই সঙ্গে পায় তা নিশ্চিত করতে হবে কারিগরি জ্ঞান ও মেধা সত্ত্ব প্রদান করা হলে এই ভ্যাকসিন বিপুল পরিমাণে উৎপাদনের সক্ষমতা বাংলাদেশে রয়েছে তিন বছরের বেশি সময় অতিক্রান্ত হলেও এখন পর্যন্ত মিয়ানমার একজন রোহিঙ্গাকেও ফেরত নেয়নি এই সমস্যা মিয়ানমারের সৃষ্টি এবং এর সমাধান মিয়ানমারকেই করতে হবে আমি আন্তর্জাতিক সম্প্রদায়কে এ ব্যাপারে আরও কার্যকর ভূমিকা গ্রহণের অনুরোধ জানাচ্ছি Today is 26 September, a black marked day of the history of Bangladesh. After the assassination of the father of the nation, Bangabundhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, on August 15 in 1975, self-proclaimed president Kandukar Mushtaq Ahmed issued an ordinance to protect the killers. Backed by a group of army personnel, Kandukar Mushtaq, a member of Bangabundhu's cabinet, rose to power after the gruesome massacre. The constitution was passed on April 9 in the same year. The amendment in indemnified All actions from August 15 of 1975 to April 9 of 1979 and also legalized all ordinances and announcements under the four years of martial law. As the indemnity ordinance was legalized through the constitutional amendment, all criminals related to the assassination of Bongo Bundhu were indemnified for good. The ordinance was definitely against the rule of law, former law minister Shafiq Ahmed said. In 1996, the Wamili government formed a committee led by the then law secretary Aminullah to scrutinize the legal side of scrapping the indemnity ordinance. The committee decided that no constitutional amendment was needed to scrap the ordinance. The indemnity ordinance could be scrapped by a majority vote in parliament the same way through which the 16 laws were acted of the amendment were scrapped, the committee said. The then law minister Abdul Mateen Kashru tabled the indemnity repeal bill 1996, which was passed on November 12 that year, paving the way to get justice for Bongo Bondhu. 
Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharmin Chaudhary has said the Bangabundu Youth Loan is an effective step to create opportunities of youth and enhance their capabilities for their development. She was addressing virtually a function organized for distribution of checks of Bangabundu Youth Loan among trained youths of Pirganj Upazila, marking the birth centenary of father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Pirganj branch of Kormur Shankstan Bank organized the function at Pirganj Upazila Purishat Auditorium today. Senior Secretary of the Financial Institutions Division, Muhammad Asadul Islam, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Kormur Shankstan Bank, Kanis Fatima, and President of Pirganj Upazila Awamilik Aziz Rahman Ranga spoke. On the occasion, the speaker launched distribution of checks of Bangabundu Youth Loan under the initiative of Karmo Shangstan Bank among 100 trained youths and 30 wheelchairs and two tricycles among the disabled people from her personal fund. 36 COVID-19 patients died in the last 24 hours in the country, increasing the death toll from the pandemic to 5,129. The recovery count rose to 2,68,777 after another 1,753 recovered during the period. A press release of the Directorate General of Health Services said today, it said the tally of infections has surged to 3,57,873 with 1,106 new cases being confirmed. Moving on to international news. The global coronavirus death toll could hit 2 million before an effective vaccine is widely used, the World Health Organization has warned. The WHO's emergency head, Dr. Mike Ryan, said at the WHO's headquarters in Geneva, the figure could be higher without concerted international action. Meanwhile, the worldwide death toll from the corona pandemic pandemic has surpassed 9,94,000 while 3 crore 28,7,000 people tested positive for COVID-19. Besides, more than 2 crore 42 lakh people have recovered from the coronavirus so far. The United States is the hardest hit country, accounting for 72,45,000 COVID-19 cases and more than 2,8,000 fatalities. India's COVID-19 death tally now stands at 93,440, while 59,8,748 people have corona cases. 26 people, most of them air cadets, have been killed in a military plane crash in Ukraine, officials say. Two people were earlier reported to have survived the crash, but one later died in hospital. The aircraft and at Novov, 26 came down near the eastern city of Kharkiv. The plane was carrying 20 cadets and seven officers from Kharkiv Air Force University and was on a training flight. Only one person survived. Declaring a day of mourning, President Volodymyr Zelensky said he wanted an objective and unbiased investigation carried out immediately into the crash. Swiss voters will decide tomorrow whether to abandon their free movement of people agreement with the EU. Supporters say the move will allow Switzerland to control its bodies and select only the immigrants it wants. Opponents argue it will plunge a healthy economy into recession and deprive hundreds of thousands of Swiss citizens of their freedom to live and work across Europe. Switzerland decided long ago not to join the EU, but it does not want access to Europe's free trade area and it wants to cooperate with Brussels in areas like transport, the environment and research and education. Seven people have been detained in connection with an attack outside the former offices of satirical magazine Charles Hebdo in Paris. A man armed with a meat cleaver wounded two people in the attack yesterday. The main suspect, identified as Pakistani origin, was arrested near the scene. Police said six others were in custody and being questioned. The attack is being treated as a terrorist incident. United Kingdom Awami League organized a virtual discussion meeting marking the historic Bangla speech of Bangabundu delivered at the United Nations in 1974. The discussion was held in London on Friday. United Kingdom Awami League President Sultan Mahmud Sharif chaired the discussion meeting moderated by General Secretary Syed Shajidur Rahman Farooq. 
The discussion was attended by eminent journalist and literature Abdul Ghaffar Chaudhuri as chief guest. Abdul Ghaffar Chaudhuri said Bangabundu's Bangla speech at the United Nations was one of the best speeches which jolted the history. He said Bangabundu in his speech presented rights of the repressed section of the society before the world. Bangabundu's speech was a brave and strong step to establish human rights and world peace, Abdul Ghaffar Chaudhuri added. Former Foreign Minister Abul Hassan Mahmud Ali and State Minister for Foreign Affairs M. Shehriyar Alam, among others, addressed the discussion through video conference from Dhaka. News and Weather In a forecast till 6 p.m. tomorrow, Met Office says light to moderate rain or thunder showers accompanied by temporary gusty wind is likely to occur at most places over Rangpur, Maiman Singh and Southern Divisions and at many places over Ratshahi, Dhaka, Khulna, Barishal and Chattogam Divisions with moderately heavy to heavy falls at places over the country. News on Sports Manchester United secured their first win of the Premier League season in dramatic fashion as they beat Brighton by three goals to two at the Amex Stadium. Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes scored one goal each for Manchester United, while Lewis Dunk of Brighton scored an own goal. Neil Mopé and Solly March scored one goal each for Brighton. To end the bulletin headlines once again. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, in her address to 75th UN General Assembly, urges world body to ensure timely and simultaneous availability of Corona vaccine to all nations. Black 26 September today, as indemnity barring trial of Bongobundu killing passed on this day in 1975, Obama scrapped black law and assuming power after 21 years. Coronavirus infection declining in country as 1,106 test positive in past 24 hours. World Health Organization warns of 2 million possible deaths around the world before effective COVID-19 vaccine made available. And Manchester United beat Brighton 3-2 in English Premier League football. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment.